Hallelujah. You know, as Renee continues on that, I'd like us to sing it in, in the spirit. That tune, because sometimes we get stuck in our own tune, right? So, I mean, we start singing in tongues, we go what we always do. So, so let's just break out of that today. And uh, if you don't speak in tongues, this is a great time to just start. In Jesus' name, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. So, Renee, you start that again, and the rest of us are going to sing that tune.
revival. Revival. We cry out revival. Revival. Yes, hallelujah. Revival in the streets. Yes. Revival in our homes. Revival. Revival. Revival in our schools. Revival. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You now I was watching a post from Ethiopia. Revival in Ethiopia. And there was hundreds and hundreds. It must have been, it looked like all men. So I think it might have been something to do with the men's conference or something. But and in the background, you can see about a thousand. And they're all just jumping and worshiping God. And the ones on the around the altar, this huge altar, were were screaming yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. and crying. Calling out to God. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Quite a bit different than Asbury. Yeah. I don't think we can say what revival looks like. Or this is the only way God's doing something. Thank God he's just doing it. Amen. No matter what it looks like. No matter what it looks like. And truthfully, I don't care what it looks like in here. But we cry out for a revival. We cry out for a revival. We cry out for revival. We need to start in our house. We start in our house. Revival. Revival to the streets of Edmonton. Revival. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. You know, John are not from the... Um, Toronto Blessing. He said that they weren't doing anything different than any other church. They didn't pray more. They didn't fast more. But God came. I think it's very interesting that that same move came upon them earlier, and he rejected it. He rejected it. It didn't look like very comfortable, yeah. and he rejected it. How many know you're pretty heavy when you reject the Lord? Yeah. And then God's graciousness, obviously one of these guys to lead it, God's graciousness came back around again. And see, the people he was connected to said, this isn't of God. But the second time around, him and his wife said, go for it. Thousands of people got saved. They don't mention that. They say, well, it's just a move. But no, there was something like 8,000 people got saved. People came from all around the world, everywhere, all around the world, to get touched by God. Hallelujah. That's revival. That's revival. But it's saying yes. At some point, you're saying yes. At some point, God doesn't care if you're inconvenienced. I was listening to Sean Boltz, and he was talking about the Asbury revival. And the last prayer that was said, um, so they were ending the service. The guy said a prayer, and he texted his wife, and he said, well, that fell flat. Like, wah, wah, wah. Right? After he preached, yeah. After, uh, and his final prayer and everything. And then 19 students wouldn't leave. So <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, praise God. <laughs> he was, and he was talking about love. He was talking about love. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. So, Father, we just thank you in this house. Revive us again. Revive us again. God, if we're tired, revive us again. If we're disappointed, revive us again. Revive us again. Revive us. If we're attacked, Father, with oppressions, revive us again. If, if we're attacked with disappointments, hallelujah, revive us again. Revive us again. Revive us again. Father, if we're physically bound up, revive us again. Revive us. Revive us. Spirit, soul, and body, revive us again. We're alive today to do something. 
We're alive today to make a difference. We're alive today for a reason. We're alive today in our world is black. And we're, we're alive today because God shines through his kids. And we thank you, God, that you shine through us today. That we have authority where we are Monday morning. We have authority where you send us. We take you with us. We change the atmosphere because you are in us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let your joy be our portion. Let your joy be our portion. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah.
Cobra baja sata chiquicho. For those that are in hell, I have the answer. Because our Father didn't just die on the cross, He went down to hell to get the keys that gets you out. He went down to hell and took the keys to get you out so as you sit in that hell that you have made or not made yourself your father in heaven who said I whatever is in heaven is here on earth I will give you all so he has given you that key he has given you that key he has given you that key and I pray right now that you even just physically reach in and turn that key and walk out of the hell that you are in. Walk it out. For you have the power to change. You have the power to change everything inside you. As soon as your spirit turns to his, your power is strong because he walks with you. You are never alone. You are never alone. He went there just for today. And whoever is listening out there, he went there just for today, just for you. I really feel there is somebody listening right now that this is just for you, that he will walk you out of the hell. He will walk you out because he has the keys. Don't forget, he's got the keys to hell and death. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And it doesn't matter how many times you've tried and failed. You need to keep your eyes on the Father. He is greater than our weakness. We know we're weak. He knows we're weak. But in Him, we are strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. Weak, I am strong. Keep your eyes on God and not on your weakness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He's given us all we need. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Actually, you, you can sit down. Thank you, team. Thank you, Father. Yeah, give them a clap. They're good for it. Do you know that money is not in heaven? I mean, I, I think when we go to heaven, we're not going to find Canadian dollars. Just, just a thought. And the inflation rate, let's hope not. But we're not going to find any dollars. We're not going to find the U.S. dollars. We're not going to find ruples. We're not going to find anything. Money is needed on the earth. Right? Money is needed on the earth. Now, there's gold and all kinds of things in heaven. We know that. I think we should start believing for paper money that the gold in heaven will back it up. Because there's no backup here on earth. <laughs> well, except to bank in Calgary. They, have, they, they do that. But, but otherwise, otherwise our, sure, our surety is that we're connected to heaven on the earth. Right? But I also know that hell can be in our mouth. That lack can be in our mouth. That debt can be in our mouth. Right? Uh, Hell is in our mouth sometimes because of unbelief. Uh, hell affects our finances maybe because of lack of wisdom. Ever been there? Ever been there? I'm glad you're all really smart, but have you ever been there? Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that God will restore even what the canker worm has eaten? 
Hallelujah. Like a wisdom sure. Uh, how, what we speak, what we pave, we pave with our mouth. We pave with our mouth. And I, I think sometimes we do good, and then sometimes we forget. Sometimes we don't even think about it. And yet the kingdom of heaven uh, prospers by God showing you how to prosper. If you have what you say, Mark eleven twenty three. 23, if you have what you say, then you guess you better watch what you say. <laughs> right? We've got to watch what we say. We've got to watch what we say. Hallelujah. And I, and I think what we need to say, Satan let go of my money. Satan let go of this money. I like, I like something I heard Bill Johnson say. He says, because he's, they have some tremendous healings in their congregation, and he says most of them come from the congregation praying for each other, not him particularly praying, you know. But he had people standing up for uh, injury in their brain. And he says these people are not standing up for prayer. These people are standing up for healing. They're standing up for healing. So when we proclaim, when we proclaim over our needs, over what's happening in our life, when we're doing that, we're proclaiming. We're not just praying. We go into a place of proclaiming. Because proclaiming, listen, proclaiming is proclaiming how God thinks. And it's proclaiming not what's happening around you. And if you have more than enough, thank you, Jesus. Pray for the rest of us. We need more than enough. Abundant life means more than you need. So it's not to put it back on yourself, but to look around. If it's more than enough, then it's for somebody else. It's for, you know, I mean, we have, I was talking to, uh, Rosie and Margaret yesterday, in Germany, they send their love and kisses, and you know they're preparing for going to Uganda and having a uh, mission outreach there. Over a million people from South Sudan in Uganda. Ray will be meeting them there. So you know, <laughs> they're there in Germany. Here we are in Edmonton, and we're connected. And we're connecting the spirit. I mean, they pray for us. We pray for them. You know how else we're connected? Finances. It says a workman is worthy of their hire. So that's why we want to bless. That's why we want to uh, have, be a house that freely gives, freely receives, and freely gives. So our mouth, I don't know about you, but our mouth has to have, our words have to have faith in them. They do. They have to have faith in them. You know, so, and we start out as like a, you know, a plane starting out and, you know, the, they say, can we leave now? And they go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they go down the runway. And then they're having, they go so high and then they have permission to go to that many feet. And then they have permission to go to 20,000 feet. Do you know what that's like in the spirit is that we may start out, but we're in the plane. We're in the plane. And the plane is going up. It's going up. We may, some may just be on the runway. You're in the plane. You're in the plane. You're believing God. You're cocooned in him. You're believing God. You're in the plane. No matter what you're going through, not just financially, you are in the plane. You know, let's say in the scripture that Jesus was in the boat. It was stormy and he was sleeping. And his disciples are getting pretty nervous. And finally, you know, Jesus wakes up. He says, you have little faith. If he's in the boat, that boat isn't sinking. We are in his boat. We are in with him. We are in with him. We are not going to sink. We are not going to sink. The only way we're going to sink is if we jump out of the boat. I don't know about you. I'm staying in the boat. 
I'm staying in the boat. You know, they, when, when Jesus told his disciples, or told everybody actually, that, uh, that they'd have to eat his body and drink his blood, you know, they went, whoa, that crazy stuff. And they kind of left him, so he looks at his disciples and says, well, what about you? And Peter says, where else would we go? You have the words of eternal life. You know, today, 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 he has given us words of eternal life. And those words need to be in our spirit, but they also have to be out of our mouths. Amen. So any, anywhere where death has come against finances, anywhere where death, uh, I tell you, I'm so coming against the spirit of death. That's what I'm teaching on today, but where, where death comes to rob life, to rob life. Especially to rob life out of givers. To rob life out of people who, who want to bless. To rob life of, of your life being satisfied. Amen? So when you're giving today, you know, I ask you to be generous today. Really, I'm asking you to be generous today. That we're given unto the Lord. Out of what we have, we're given to him today. That his blessing would be upon you and his blessing would be upon your house. This house, in Jesus' name. God bless you. All kinds of ways to give. Appreciate that. Oh, God is good. God is good. Shake, shake, God is good. Second Timothy 9. Hallelujah. Who has saved us and called us to a holy life? Who has saved us and called us to a holy life? Not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. Not because of anything we have done. Now that should be a relief to some people. Not, not because of anything we've done, but by his grace by his grace his purpose and grace this grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time wow he made grace available to us purpose he already purposed purposed our lives before the beginning of time so we were in his mind before things were even created And he's already prepared things ahead of time for his creation. You know, he didn't make the fish before the the water, (laughs) right? You know, he didn't make the birds before the sky. He didn't make mankind before the earth was ready for it. And God is already prepared ahead of time. He is actually the God who prepares ahead of time. So anything that you're looking at today, he is the God who prepared ahead of time. That's why it's so important that we hear him, because he has a pathway in front of us that he's already prepared ahead of time. The power to hear his voice, the power to hear his voice, to be led by his spirit. Wow. To spend time in his presence, to meditate upon his word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He is prepared ahead of time. That's why we don't have to fear. Because it's not depending on everything we do. It's depending on hearing him and walk in that direction. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. So it also says in 10, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus. Listen to this. Who has destroyed, abolished death. Who has destroyed, abolished death, and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Through the good news, he has brought life. That we are no longer bound by death. And that death has actually been abolished. Well, why do people die? He's not talking about you're lying down and going to heaven. He's talking about the influences of death have been abolished. 
And you think about also, we, we don't take death lightly, even when it affects the physical body, do we? You know, I, how many people did we pray through COVID? Right? Some in serious, serious condition. Thank God they all came through. Be because we just don't say, okay, looks like they're going. We don't stand there. We fight till there's no reason to fight anymore. Right? And even then we keep going. <laughs> right? So there's a natural death which we all will face. And until then, death is our enemy. It is our enemy. There's also spiritual death, which means you're separated from God. And that's why Jesus came. That you're no longer spiritually separated from God. There's death to our souls, things that happen in our soul. But Christ has abolished death. He's reduced it to inactivity. So where are we letting death affect us? The promise of the gospel is to make death inactive in your body, in your soul. If you're born again, there's no death in your spirit. It's only his life. John 5, 24, I tell you the truth. Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me, Jesus speaking, has what? Eternal life and will not be condemned. Well, there goes all that condemnation and will not be condemned he has crossed over from what death to life he has crossed over from death to life you have crossed over from death to life not only in your spirit but that which we grab hold of in the soul realm in the body realm in our thinking realm we grab hold of life and not death Death is our enemy. You know, when Eva was little, she had to have some x-rays done, and we went into where they were taking the x-rays. There's no one in there but her and I, and, and, the, and God starts speaking to me to bind up the spirit of death. And I thought, well, maybe, it was a clinic, not a hospital, so I thought, well, maybe someone's just dying in here, you know. So I says, I thank you, God, for life. It's a bind up spirit of death. And uh, then the doctor came in and technicians and a nurse, and Eva was up on that bed thing. They began to inject her with a dye. She starts sneezing. And I yelled at them, she's allergic. But by that time, it was already in her body. Her throat swelled up. And she no longer could breathe. The doctor says to the nurse, get the antidote, point to the drawer. She went there and says, it's not here. And she goes, find some. So her and another lady, she ran out. She took so long, he sent someone else looking. In the meantime, my child couldn't breathe. But the God who prepares ahead of time Thank God I was able to hear him. Thank God I was able to hear him. And so I was seated, and Eva was level with me, with her eyes, and I just started praying in the spirit. Remember, a nurse said, kept saying pardon, and I just must have thought I was a foreigner, you know. Uh, and Eva and my eyes locked and I tell you the Holy Ghost had us both it took so long finally they got back and they injected it into her hand so you know that vein there get faster and it was painful if you've ever had it's different there right and it's painful especially a little kid and and she tried to make a sound, but there was no sound because she had no breath. 
And then she started to breathe. I tell you, there was worried people in that room. Guy told me later, he says, I, one of the technicians said, I don't know how your daughter lived. I says, I do. God kept her alive. Amen. Of course, I, I won't, many of you know the story, but it goes with this. We have the power over death. The nurse was wiping her down after, you know, her forehead and everything. And, and Eva hadn't said a word. And so she looks up the nurse and says, in this gravelly little voice, because, of course, her throat had been all frozen up. And she says to the nurse, do you know Jesus? And the nurse said, yes, I do. That isn't it interesting. God put one of his kids in there with us. And there's many times God, I'm sure many of you can have testimonies of how God spared death, spared death, even in your own children, praying about. They were in danger, and you only knew through the Holy Spirit. Thank God. Thank God. Because... God's an enemy of death. Except when we blink of an eye, go on to heaven, death is just something we walk over. We're out of here. Hallelujah. John 1, love this scripture. In the beginning was the word. I mean, he's talking about when things started, not that, that Jesus wasn't before the beginning. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Speaking about Jesus Christ, the Word. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. We'll ask him about mosquitoes when we get there. In him was life. (laughs) Our Savior didn't come with death. In him was life. Hallelujah. And that life was the light of men. All, all men, actually. All men can see the light. They spiritually eyes are open. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. I like that definition that the darkness cannot overtake it. One little, one little light in a great big black room is not put out by the darkness. But I tell you, everybody in that place, if you walk into a dark room, you can see that light instantly. Because darkness cannot overtake light. And his light is in you. Therefore, darkness has no right to overtake you. His light is in you. Hallelujah. Where are we allowing death when we have been given the promise of life? To be carnally minded is death, the Bible says. Romans 8, 6. That means that controlled by ap- animal appetites, governed by human nature and not led by God's spirit. Human wisdom and all its weaknesses, those things can lead to death. Romans 8, 3, in the message. God went with the juggler when he sent his own son. <laughs> He didn't deal with the problem as something remote or unimportant. He doesn't think it's remote or unimportant, the things that have happened to mankind, the things that have happened to you. In his son Jesus, he personally took on the human condition, entered into the disordered mess of struggling humanity in order to set it right once and for all. The law code of the law, weakened as it always was by fractured human nature, could never have done that. The law could never have done that. The law only showed us how much we failed, how much we couldn't measure up. And now what the law code asked for, but we couldn't deliver. Hallelujah. Could not deliver. Did our best. That's why they had sacrifices, right? Sorry I have stuck here. Accomplished as we, instead of redoubling our own efforts, listen, 
instead of redoubling our own efforts, simply embrace what the Spirit is doing in us. Embrace what God is doing in you. Embrace that the Holy Spirit is in us. It's not about pulling up your boots. It's about acknowledging that the spirit of life is in you, and that spirit of life will strengthen you, and that spirit of life will give you uh, your pathway, your direction is the spirit of life. Those who think they can do it on their own end up obsessed with measuring their own moral muscle, but never getting around to exercising it in real life. Those who trust God's action in them. I just want you to think about that right now. Do you trust God's action in you? Do you trust that God's able to speak? Do you trust that God is able to deliver? Do you trust that living God dwells within your body? Say, do you trust? Do you trust that? Do you trust that knowledge? Do you trust that understanding? Hallelujah. Those who trust God's action in them find that God's spirit is in them. Living and breathing God. Living and breathing God is in you today. Obsession with self in these matters is a dead end. Attention to God leads us out into the open. Into a spacious, free life. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be carnally minded is death. Yes, yeah, it's, it's interesting because it says that the wages of sin are death. Amen. It's a wage. It's a wage. It's a wage. But we have the gift of life, which is a gift. Right? He's given us free. It's a gift. Thank you, Father. Hebrews 2, 14 in the message. Since the children are made of flesh and blood, it's logical that the Savior took on flesh and blood in order to rescue them by death, by his death. So it's logical. No man could pay the price for treason against God. And he sent a perfect man, Jesus Christ. 100% God, but 100% man. By embracing death, listen, by embracing death, taking it into himself, he destroyed the devil's hold on death and freed all who cower through life scared to death of death. It says the fear of death keeps you all your life in bondage. It's obvious, of course, that he didn't go to all this trouble for angels. It was for people like us, the children of Abraham, that's why he had to enter into every detail of human life. Then when he came before God as a high priest to get rid of the people's sins, he would have already experienced it all himself, all the pain, all the testing, and would be able to help where help was needed. So where do you need help? Where do you need help? He came. He went through all of that to be able to help you, to come where help is needed. Hallelujah. You know, salvation is all his idea. It's all his idea. He's called the Messiah. He is the Savior. It's all his idea. Whatever you need saved for from today, or maybe you want entrance into another area, vision, whatever. He is the Messiah, the one that came to save. The one to put you on the right path. I love this scripture in 1 Corinthians 7.10. The Amplified. For godly sorrow that is in accord with the will of God produces a repentance without regret. See, when God has us repent, you know, I was watching on that post in Ethiopia. And the men were at the altar. They're all on their knees, but they were about 10 deep. They were actually on top of each other. 
It's amazing. It was just amazing. All crying out to God. I tell you, <laughs> at the end of that, at the end of that repentance, that, that calling out to God, whatever they were calling out to God for, there's no regret. You're only thankfulness that God heard them. And that if God puts on us, our hearts, I mean, there's times we need to repent. There's times we need to go a different direction. There's times, and God will pressure up, put pressure on us. He doesn't break your arm. He doesn't slap you around. Well, actually, <laughs> I remember this Italian guy, and his mom was a real go-getter. And he, was a, and he was a smoker. He got born again, but he was a smoker. And so, I can't remember if it was him or his dad, but any one of them. So he snuck out to the barn to have a smoke. And he says, a hand came and just smacked him across the head. <laughs> and he went flying. <laughs> and he went running, in, went on, running into the house. Mama, Mama, God hit me, God hit me. <laughs> She goes, what were you doing? And she says, well, I was smoking. Then you deserved it. She says, I tell you, you're not going to pick up another smoke after. God hits you, right? Hallelujah. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, his mom, his mom was a wild one. So it was, it was good. It was good. Do you think he was sorry that he quit smoking? I don't think so. Hallelujah. It says, but what, listen to this, but worldly sorrow, the hopeless sorrow of those who do not believe, produces death. See, when God brings us to repentance, when God brings us to change, we never regret it. I don't regret that I don't do drugs anymore. Gee, I wish I could do that again. There's no regret. There's no regret. I, see, I, I'm sorry this, the spirit of torment left me. How about you? Where has God delivered you? You could have delivered your mind from the way you think, delivered your heart from fear, delivered your... No regrets. No regrets. When God touches us, when he delivers us, no regrets. How about giving? I have never regretted giving to the Lord. Ever. Ever. Why would I? Makes no sense. And you look at the word. <laughs> and I know God has always looked after me. I have no regret. I have no regret. He's a good God. I have absolutely no regret. But worldly sorrow produces death. If what you're thinking brings you to places of condemnation, if it brings you to an unnatural fear of God, if it brings you to those places that God's mad at you or any of those things, listen, that is earthly sorrow. Because godly sorrow brings you to a place of being able to turn around. Hallelujah. But the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, Romans 8, 2. But the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has freed me from the law of sin and death. I'm not, I'm not under that anymore. I have the gift of God, which is eternal life, right? Hallelujah. The Passion Bible, John eleven twenty three. 23. Jesus told her, this is Martha, Jesus told her, your brother will rise and live. Lazarus was dead in the tomb for four days. She replied, yes, I know he will rise with everyone else on resurrection day. Praise God she knew that. Martha wasn't always in the kitchen. And Mary was actually a disciple, that's what that terminology means. Martha, Jesus said, you don't have to wait until then. He says to us, we don't have to wait till then. 
I am the resurrection. I am life eternal. Anyone who clings to me in faith, even though he dies, will live forever. Because we follow the God of life. We follow the God of life. And we push back the power of death. Hallelujah. You know, who said you were stuck with, you know, a certain amount of wage, a certain amount of money? Remember Tony Miller talking about when he was a kid, he'd color outside the line. And as you get older, you know, they tell you to stay in the line. He said, I figured out as an adult, I had to start coloring outside the line. That we're stuck in a certain way. That we're stuck in a certain way of thinking. Uh, that we're stuck, this is, this, is, this is my life. They're stuck, this is going to be my life. If we're stuck without the spirit of Christ speaking in us, if we're stuck without the word of life speaking to us, then we are stuck in that little coloring thing. Got to get the right color. It just makes sense. Just makes sense. God's saying, get that crayon. Get a purple one. Get a red one. Get whatever color is your favorite and start coloring outside the line. Start coloring outside. I, that, that sermon so affected me, I came back and brought everybody crayons. And we did it the next Sunday. Color outside the line. God does not cocoon you in a set place, except if it's his set place. And that we need to think outside the box. We're in a day that's crazy, okay? We're in a day where they, you know, they're threatening all kinds of things financially. That's why we pray for the borders of Alberta. And we pray that in the spirit, the rats can't come in. In the spirit, the rats have to leave. Right? We need to protect our province. But in the same time, you know, people who, who are real entrepreneurs and people who think outside the box, they prosper in the time of famine. So they prosper. They find a way. They find a way. Do you know what? We should be finding ways. We should have wisdom. We should have wisdom. There's one fellow says, you know, intercession gets you closer to God. But wisdom lets you hear him in the direction you should be going. We need wisdom and understanding. We need intercession. We need wisdom and understanding. God didn't cut our heads off when we got born again. Sometimes it would have been good, but he doesn't. So therefore, God has a way for us to prosper, individually and as a house. He has a way for us to prosper. That has nothing to do with the economy. It's got to do with, do we hear God, and what can we do to solve the problems that the earth is facing? Hallelujah. You out there, wherever you are, whatever country, God would speak to you to prosper. He would speak to you to hear his voice and to prosper. Thank you, Father. So we're going to have communion right now. If you, have a, if you, if you don't have a communion... Uh, I think just put up your hand, we'll get it to you. If you believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, He died for you, you're welcome at this table. Hallelujah. So this is a common event that we do together. And it's great when we do it together, that doesn't mean you can't do it by yourself. Doesn't mean you can't do it with your family. Hallelujah. We're all priests now. 
and that we remember together. And together we bring into the present the meaning of the bread and the wine. We bring it into today. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three in the Amplified. For I received from the Lord himself that instruction which I passed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night in which he was betrayed took bread. Isn't it wonderful? Uh, uh, he's so wonderful. Like he was being betrayed and thinking of us. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is, represents my body, which is offered as a sacrifice for you. Do this in affectionate remembrance of me. Don't do it religiously. Do it in affection for me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying that this cup is the new covenant ratified and established in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in affectionate remembrance of me. Hallelujah. Then he goes in 11, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three. Let me go over with you again exactly what goes on in the Lord's Supper and why it's so centrally important. He was just talking about they'd, they'd come and they'd, they'd have communion and they'd have all kinds of food and they wouldn't feed the poor and they'd stuff themselves. Uh, one translation says you eat like pigs and, uh, and, and let the poor not eat. I mean, just crazy stuff. And some of them were so drunk they had to help them home. A little bit too much wine. This isn't, this isn't wine for your stomach's sake. You know what I mean? This is gluttony. It's gluttony. I received my instructions from the master himself and passed them on to you. The master Jesus, on the night of his betrayal, took bread. Having given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body broken for you. His body broken for you. Do this to remember me. After did the same thing with the cup. And it says, this cup is my blood, my new covenant with you. Each time you drink this cup, remember me. What you must solemnly realize is that every time you eat this bread and every time you drink this cup, you reenact in your words and actions the death of the master. What he accomplished. What he accomplished for us. You would be drawn back to this meal again and again until the master returns. You must never let famili famili familiarity breed contempt. Don't ever take this for granted. Never do it flippantly because of the power that it represents. So, and, and, you know, it's interesting because in, you know, above the scriptures it talks about the treatment of others and ignoring what the true supper is all about. Thank you, Father. The last supper, Jesus washed the disciples' feet, and he was showing us how to respond to each other. And at the same supper, the disciples argued about who was the greatest amongst them. <laughs> oh, boy. Don't you feel sorry for God sometimes? I'm, the, I'm telling you. But God, God was showing us, Jesus was showing us how to operate in a new kingdom. That leaders are servants and that we love each other. Thank you, Father. So Luke 22, 29, the NIV. Luke 22, 29. I confer on you a kingdom, just as my Father conferred one on me. Wow. So you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. And sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel, talking to the disciples. And there is no kingdom without a king. And we are in his kingdom. And we have a king. And that he died for us. He died that death, that death would have no call on us. That death has no rights in our body. When we go to, go to heaven, let's just put our feet up and go. And we're ready to go. Let's just go. Let's just go. And I know people are just, you ready? They, they go. Put our feet up and go. None of this dying slowly. Come on. Is that what God would have for us? Dying slowly? And stop talking about what old age affects your body. 
even nutritionally and stuff, they're finding out that's not the case. And your scripture says we can live to 120 if we want to. I don't know if anyone wants to. <laughs> but he's promised us a long life. Therefore, I don't take lightly when people go home. I mean, I'm happy for them, but it really ticks me off. <laughs> it does. There's a few people I'm going to smack when I get up there. <laughs> Norma being number one. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know she skipped out. I know she did. And you know, let me tell you something. There's times that death visits us. You know, especially some of us, our age that we're getting. I've had death visit me a number of times. But I'm not ready to go. I feel like I've got stuff to do. What would my kids do without me? Seriously. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, no. I've got stuff to do. You've got stuff to do. So rebuke the spirit of death off of you. Off of your body. Off of your mind. Never mind that senility stuff. They're saying that's not true. It's all the stuff that, you know, 200 years ago, they weren't losing their brains when they got older. We live in a world that's corrupt. Our food's corrupt, everything's corrupt. But you know who isn't corrupt? God is not corrupt. Amen. And his life is for us. His life. That we say, together we say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Death, come out of me. Come out of me. I push you back. I push you back. I belong to Christ. I belong to Christ. And this body. It's the temple of the living God. It's the temple of the living God. Through, living Jesus God name. Through Jesus' name. Through Jesus' name. Through Jesus' name. Yes. We receive the life of God today. We receive, we receive the life yes. of God today. Yes. Life, Lord. resurrection Lord. life. Lord. Resurrection Lord. life yes. quickens our mortal bodies Lord. today. Lord. Resurrection Lord. life Lord. quickens our mortal bodies Lord. today. Lord. From our toes to our head, from our heads to our toe. Resurrection life quickens our cells today. Uh, quickens every part of us today. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And we bring blessing even in the breaking of this bread today. God's blessing. Listen, we need to be right with God. I understand that. Ask forgiveness of sin. I understand that. But the main thing we need to remember at communion is what he did through it. Amen. What did he do through it? Amen. So we take this bread today and remember his body was broken, that your body would be well. We take this wine today because we remember the blood of Jesus was shed for the forgiveness of our sin. We remember the work that was done. We remember that the spirit of destruction has to pass over our house. Because the blood is upon it. The blood is upon it. So today, we rejoice today in our, in our receiving. We remember what you've done, Lord. Jesus, we remember what you've done. And we receive what you've done. We receive, God. We put up our antennas. And we receive, we receive the blessing of what you have done for us. We receive it in our minds, in our bodies, in our hearts. We receive it in Jesus' name, infirmity, get away from us. Amen. Death, get away from us. We have the power to get results because life is. The spirit of life dwells in us, and we receive with thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 
just wait a minute. Just, uh, just get, yeah, just read. Let's just, just acknowledge what God is doing in you. Acknowledge His love towards you. Acknowledge His vision in you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the covenant you made through, through your son. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. just want to speak the name of Jesus for all you've done Lord over every heart and every mind cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak I just want to speak the name of Jesus till every dark addiction starts to break. Till everything is hope and there is freedom. Yes, I speak Jesus. Hallelujah. Ms. Nesbitt, closing, please. If you need personal prayer, you can meet our prayer team here at the right. We're happy to pray for you. Uh, also, to let you know that um, Charlie Robinson is with us on the 19th. So, praise God, that's about two weeks from now. And uh, also, could I meet the financial board here just for one second, right on the my left, okay? God bless you today. Be a nuisance to the devil. Love on someone really a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Bless you.